There she is. See the queen oh, yeah. so September's here, and that means it's time to get ready for the winter. First job on the list is going to be getting firewood organized. One of the reasons why we can use an air source heat pump in the building and so we can be completely fossil fuel free is because we've got secondary heating in the form of a wood burning stove in our living room. But we need lots of wood for that. And this year we haven't had a chance to put down our own wood because we've started thinning out the woods and taking out the dead wood, but it needs a whole year, at least a year for it to dry and to season properly before we can burn it. So for this winter, hopefully for the last winter, we've had to buy some in. Yeah. I like your crane lift system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot quicker than a crane. <laughs> yeah. So we've had a delivery of hornbeam and ash. It's been uh, dried for about a year, seasoned uh, in cords and then chopped by the guy that delivered it. Uh, we had it delivered today and now we're just gonna stack it, get it out of the weather and get ready for winter. We need to keep the wood off the ground if it rains. Uh, so we're gonna use these upcycled fence posts that we uh, found here on the property. Uh, and we'll lie these down and stack the wood on top of it and that will uh, stop it from getting damp. It's really important to us that the timber that we buy has got as little embodied energy in it as possible. Little amount of fossil fuels that have been used to cut it down, to transport it, and to, to dry it, and to bring it to us. So if we buy locally sourced wood that's been naturally seasoned rather than kiln dried, that keeps that to an absolute minimum. So it's really important that we buy our wood at this point in the year because that means that the suppliers that we like, the local suppliers that, that season the, the wood sustainably, they've still got stock. If we waited till later in the season, then it tends to be either a lot more expensive or we just can't get the right wood. So it's really important that we do this job now. There we go, done. A few weeks ago, a friend of ours gave us a hive to look after for a few weeks. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to it up here. And basically, he's coming today to do a full inspection of the hive. We're going to open it up, we're going to look for the queen, we're going to check that they're putting down enough stores for the, for the winter, 
and have a full look through, which is really, really exciting. Just before that, I'd love to ask you, if you've enjoyed this video so far, to give us a like, hit the thumbs up button. It means a massive amount to us as a small channel because it tells YouTube that we're making content that's worth telling other people about. So thank you very much for doing that. Anyway, let's go have a look at that hive. Let's have a look at the front just to see what's happening. <laughs> wow, you can certainly hear them. They're busy. That's really loose because it's a feeder in the top. They haven't stuck it down. Mm. Well, they're pretty chilled. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to um. Go straight in with the smoker. I will have to give this a little shake, which can sometimes get them a little bit. That's all right. good. So then we've got this one is like the blank one. It's a little bit of stores in it, but so you cook it with this. the hive tool, right? Yeah, like okay. A little. Um, depth there, yeah, okay. just loosens it. And, and what's this one called? This is a frame of the super. This is the super. So the top one here is the super and this is the brood box. Yeah, okay. And this is the frame. And we've used foundation when we built these frames, which is to get some started with some wax. Yep. I'm just gonna shake that off so I can put it over there. And that gives us and why are you shaking these off? Just because I don't really want to necessarily put the bees over there because some of these bees maybe maybe have never left the hive. Okay. If you'd put them outside, they wouldn't know where they were. So all we're doing is creating a bit of space. I'm going to put that in there for safekeeping. Yep. So that'll go back in again. Yep. And then it means we can... So you're going to inspect each of these frames? You're going to pull yes. each of them out and have a look at all it of them? It should be up here. There's just honey. But because we took the queen excluder out, uh -huh. she could have come up and started laying. Okay. Which up doesn't, in the, in this time of year, doesn't matter too much um, because we want her to have access to all the honey over winter. But yeah, they're looking pretty chilled. So now, in order to sort of keep the the um, the whole hive colony warm, we're just going to move that up. Yeah. So we've created enough space because what you don't really want to do is just pull the whole thing out because everything slides against each other, they get damaged, okay. the cells get broken. So you always want to... Like, and there's pull these them this spacers way. between them, keep just the right gap for them to be able to get in. Yes, there's a B space which is about eight, nine millimeters. And so it has to be over six, mm, over six mm. to seven millimeters, but under 11 millimeters. Yeah. And then if it's the right size, they can get through it, but they won't build in it. Right. They'll use it just for active. So this is honey now. So you can see there, wow. there's the nectar. And then this has been capped. So they've put a wax yeah, cap okay. over it. So there's honey in that cell? Yes. So it's, they cap it when the moisture level has got down below about 20%. Right. And right so you, what are you doing here? You're hunting for the queen? No, not at the moment, no. really. I mean, it's possible she's up here, but pretty unlikely. I haven't seen any eggs. Ah, here we go. Look. So she has been up here. Okay. You can see here grubs. So she's been laying in here. Oh, I see. In and those cells? Yeah, so normally you wouldn't want the queen laying in the super because this is our honey store. That, okay, fine. But because of the time of year, we're going now into winter, yep. it doesn't matter so much. We let her use the whole hive. Because you've already taken some honey? Yeah, look, there's heaps there. She's been up here. Yeah. You should spot her. She's got a blue spot on her back because she's a new queen from this year. So this year's queens are marked blue. So many. Yeah, so this, this she's been up like laying quite a lot in here, which is fine. Um, but in the in the spring, you really need to get her down in the brood box. Right. And then... So you want all the brood happening in the brood yeah, boxes yeah. and all the honey happening yeah, above up in the, in the super. What you don't want is to be confusing your honey harvest yeah. by having brood in with your honey. Of course, because how would you separate it out? Yeah. Oh, there she is. See the queen in the oh, middle? Oh, yeah. 
red spot. Sorry, red I don't know why I said blue, didn't I? Okay, so this is, <laughs> red that's spot. whatever year it is. God, yeah. she's huge as well, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's really tall. But she is difficult to spot without the um, spot and bat. Often they're quite good at hiding. <laughs> and how long does she live for? They can live up to four years, but they're kind of pretty productive for three, as long as they've mated well. And so she'll keep that spot on the whole time, so you can always yeah, find her? Yeah, it's a permanent spot. Is it? Um, and it's not just so you can find out, you can tell that she's this year's queen. She's actually a buck fast that I bought from Black Mountain Honey. So we'll pop her back in. Yeah. So we've seen the queen, that's wow, great. Fantastic. And she looked healthy, I mean, yeah. moving around. Yeah, yeah. The main problem with the queen and doing inspections is that you can damage her. Okay. And she can get crushed. And then yeah. We've got more brood here and stores. So the brood's in the middle. What I'll do is just light blow and they move around and then you can really see ah, okay yeah this is basically foundation here this is the yeah. base so yeah. it's quite thick on the other side and then here you've got quite shallow little cells and then you've got brood here it's yeah. amazing how chilled they are well yeah they are normally i mean this these are a renowned uh breeding of the buck fast is calm bees Oh, and so the type of queen can affect the whole behaviour of the colony. Yeah, this is the, the key. This is the key to breeding, really, is to get try and get um, the queen that's laying eggs that's bred um, to be calm, productive, and disease resistant. So here we've got a couple of drones here. Okay. A few drones actually. So that's the drone. That's the male bee. It's got bigger eyes. Generally a bit bigger, sort of fluffier. Oh, it is a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, they're quite good for practicing catching bees because you have yeah, not got the best gloves on for it. But it's almost like a mini queen. Is that? It's, it is a bit large. Where are you going to grab him? Well, because <laughs> yeah, because they um, you should try and catch both wings. But a lot of people can do that with queens. I'm not good enough yet to be able to pick the queen up. But um, wow. yeah, being able to handle the bees by pinching their back wings is a thing and. And why do you want to do that then? Uh, because sometimes you need to mark the queen. Oh, with the queen, right. Yeah, okay, or right. you just want to maybe, I mean, there are beekeepers that will catch the queen, put her in a box, put her in a pocket, <laughs> and then work through the hive confident that they've got the queen, and then they'll put her, introduce her at the end of it. You know, that's pretty normal for, you know, expert beekeepers. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to take this off now, because we're worried about the queen being in there. Okay. So I'm just now splitting these two. I'm checking that then all running around on the base. Just put that there. I'll put this on top just to keep them warm. And then we can start looking in this one. And so, so it literally just sits on it. Yeah. It's yeah, not it in, it's not embedded. They, or, they glue it down themselves to right. seal up any gaps. But the rest of the time, I mean you could nudge it and it would split. Yeah, I mean it took a bit of levering to get it open. Yeah. But yeah, they're all essentially just balanced on there. Right. So you're going to do the same thing, but these are deeper, so not so easy to get out because they're a bit more, just a bit more length to pull through. So this is really a bit of a useless, yeah. just filling the space with the old foundation, but you can see the foundation there, that's, that's the, what we start with. Yeah. What I'm really looking for now is whether she's still laying down here, and if not, whether they've filled this up with stores, because what can happen is that she comes up and they sort of create a very high brood area, and then the bottom of the combs become a bit empty. And then grabbing it here. Mm. So then you just check that it's not got stores in it and then you give them a shake so it's literally just a move downwards then jolt up and that just shakes them up into it. It can be quite sort of uh, vigorous. Uh, so that one I think you can probably yeah put that aside because that's empty as well and then we'll just work through the same again. Yeah, yeah, I'm not that's worried good. about getting stung. I'm yeah. just really worried about scratching them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fair enough. It's good to 
you just build that just builds in the confidence after a while you sort of learn to sort of nudge them out of the way but it's nice to do it slow and gently and just yes because it's very stuck it's yeah, interesting. And it should be quite heavy as well so you yeah. Sure oh yeah that's nice totally thing. different so is that got stores or are we looking at what have we got there? No, there's not a lot going on actually. No, it's quite empty. It could be that, that she's been laying in there. Yeah. Nothing in there either. No. So she's moved up into this space, so it probably means they need a bit more feeding. Okay. So that's kind of good to know. This is what the whole reason for doing it. They've got enough honey for now. Yeah. But the thing is that as we get further into the autumn, they you, get less and less options. For and them and you want uh, stores for the whole winter or so. Yeah, yeah. And ideally you feed them uh, a solution of sugar that they can treat like nectar yeah and then they store it in their in their own cone which is the best way for them to feed is yeah. in their own natural cone mm -hmm. can't get out of this in so oh. what we can do now is just ah uh, of course i just need to get purchased look at that it really has an effect yeah yeah Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's really stuck. Okay. It'll be interesting to see what's on here. There's a lot of brood. So she's been down here. There's heaps of brood. That's great. I'm going to try blow. You just move around a bit. You can really see oh, what's okay. underneath. It's good. No, they're building up numbers nicely for. Um, for the winter and as you said that's what they want too it's also about having enough yeah numbers. the numbers yeah, yeah they okay. need the numbers to keep warm and they need the food to keep okay, fed good. right so that is a good sign yeah absolutely check the base okay they're quite sort of piled up so we're going to go gently i don't want to just drop it down and squish no. them because they're, they'll move out the way and you're just sort of warning them that it's just sliding it around huh. and they'll move out of the way especially as the queens are there because you know yeah so that should be all right so there's only one that's actually feed down there trying to feed oh just completely submerged that one bee it's just on this side look Oh yes, be rescue. You <laughs> and then all your friends can help. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> In the sugar. Good. Yay, great stuff. Yeah. All happy. Healthy hive. Back together again. Need some more food, but yeah, other than that they're they're doing good. <laughs> well that was amazing. Seeing inside a hive was incredible and it's obviously a lot you need to know to be able to do this right. So I think this winter I need to get my learn on. Anyway, thanks a lot for showing up and watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more of our content, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.